Okay, first of all, I'd like to point out that a neoconservative movement is more or less an alliance of the right and the left, and they get into the head and the policies of the policymakers from the right and the left. <sighs> okay, so let me let me stick to my notes and to the list because this is a very deep subject. It has to do with the conspiracy. It has to do with um, dual loyalties amongst Jewish thinkers. Neoconservatives started off as Jewish thinkers, the people labeled neocons, new conservatives. Some people have argued that it actually means um, Jew conservatives. Um, they have a disdain for counterculture. You know, they don't like opposition view. They aligned with Nixon in battling communism. They focus on the Middle East because obviously they're Jews with dual interests. Um, some famous neocons, just before I read the list, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, John Bolton, Elliot Abrams, Richard Pearl, and Paul Bremer. Also, um, Jean Kilpatrick, a woman. The neoconservative draws on several intellectual trans traditions. It's for, for example, the student of the students of Leo Strauss is, was a major group of it. Um, and they see him as one of the founders of neoconservatism. Strauss was a refugee from Nazi Germany. Okay, so these people are militant. And part of the reason why I chose to make this is because the person who challenged me um, must have been aware that I'm a Muslim. Um, the f Hispanic female said she's his cousin, but he looks very Jewish. It almost begs the question, if she's Jewish, perhaps they're Spanish Jews, perhaps they're Mexicans, you know, perhaps she, she's not related to him and he's a Jew that the Mexicans, the Serranos and the Mexican Mafia brought in, you know, to, to tone me up, so to speak, because he's one of the people who has the biggest problem with Islam. If you think about it, the Mexican Mafia doesn't necessarily have a problem with Islam. They're not exactly best friends with Islam. Muslims, but they don't necessarily have a problem with it. There are a lot of his, more Hispanics than you think in America who are Muslims. With that being said, let me read you a list of neocons from Wikipedia. Um, they say, quote, the list includes public people identified as personally neoconservative at an important time or high official with numerous neoconservative advisors such as George W. Bush and Richard Cheney. So remember, these are people who used to be Democrats, they believe in a welfare state, um, but they also um, want aggressive action. They want aggressive action against communism. They want aggressive action against Islam, especially radical Islam. So the politicians, Mary Fallon, um, governor of Oklahoma, U.S. representative from Oklahoma, lieutenant governor of Oklahoma. Newt Gingrich, I'm sure many of you heard of him. I believe he ran for, yeah, 2012 presidential candidate. Uh, also before that, U.S. representative from Georgia's 6th Congressional District, Speaker of the House of Representatives um, from 1995 to 1999. Isn't that interesting? Rudy Giuliani. We all know about accusations of his connections to 9-11 and his uh, undeniable um, role. Asa Hutchinson, Arkansas governor, former administrator of Administrator of the Drug Enforcement Administration 2001-2003 and former U.S. Representative from Arkansas 3rd Conditional, Congressional District. Susanna Martinez, Governor of Mexico. I'm going to have to shoot through this. Paul Wolfowitz, State and Defense Department official. R. James Woolsey Jr., Director of Central Intelligence under the Secretary of Naver, Green Energy Lobbyist. Richard Pearl, Assistant Secretary of Defense. John Kilpatrick, Ambassador to the United Nations. Scooter Libby, Chief of Staff to Cheney. John R. Bolton, Ambassador to the United Nations, 2005-2006, recess appointee. Elliot Abrams, um, I mentioned it before, former uh, policy advisor. William G. Boykin, under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence. Elliot A. Cohen, U.S. State Department Consular, 2007-2009. Robert E. Osgood, Professor of Strategic Studies at the Paul H. Nitz, Nitzi, um, School of Advanced International Studies at John Hopkins University. Okay, then it goes on to academics and public intellectuals, which aren't as important. Let me just read them off. You know, Robert Kagan, coming out of the Yale Political Monthly. Um, he's the founder of it. You know, senior fellow at Brookinson's Institution, historian, 
blah, 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 advisor to Republican campaigns, advisor to Hillary Rodman Clinton at the State Department. Um, he calls himself a liberal interventionist rather than a neoconservative. Francis Fukuyami, excuse me, Fukuyama, former neoconservative, senior fellow at the Center of Democracy, Development, and the Rule of Law at Stanford, former neoconservative political scientist, political economist, economist and author. Victor Davis Hansen, Martin and Illy um, Anderson, senior fellow at Stanford University's Hoover Institution, columnist and author. Michael Leiden, um, Freedom Scholar Chair at the Foundation of Defense for Demo of Democracy's former U.S. government consulate, uh, consultant, uh, author, columnist. Nathan Glazer, professional sociology. Harvey, Harvey Mansfield, William R. Kennan Jr., professor of government at Harvard University. Donald Kagan, Sterling Professor of Classics and History at Yale University. Remember in one of my last videos, I don't know if I uploaded it yet by the time you see this one, or if you know what I'm talking about, but I said that just because somebody is considered an expert and they're very well educated doesn't mean they're right. Too many people make that mistake. They say, oh, well, he, he's, he's a professor at Hanford, uh, Stanford or Yale or Harvard. He must know what he's talking about. He's a political scientist. Well, well wow. I'm so, I'm, I'm, it's heartfelt. They, they love us. They must be right. They're Ivy League, white privilege pricks. They must be right. Irving Crystal, deceased, um, publisher, journal, columnist. This is public intellectuals. William Crystal, founder and editor of the Weekly Standard, professor in political philosophy, uh, political philosophy and American politics political advisor. Norman Podhertz, editor-in-chief of commentary. John Podhertz, editor-at-large in commentary, presidential speech writer, author, Erwin Stelzer, international economics and business columnist, editor at the Weekly Standard, Oxford Fellow. Charles Cruthemer, Pulitzer Prize winner, columnist, physician. David Frum, journalist, Republican, speech, writer, columnist. Oriana Falacci, Italian, deceased, U.S. permanent resident, journalist and writer. Jennifer Rubin, columnist and blogger, Washington Post. Michael Rubin, resident scholar at the uh, American Enterprise Institute. Um, Frederick Kagan, resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute. Jonathan S. Toden, senior online editor of commentary. Daniel Pipes, former neoconservative historian writer and political commentator. Fred Barnes, executive editor of the news publication, The Weekly Standard. And the list goes on. This is just what Wikipedia has. Obviously, there's tons, just like, uh, what was it, Leo Strauss, his students. On and on and on. Um, let me read you... Okay, Ron Paul is against these neocons. It's important to note that there's pragmatism or realism, which is a moderate conservative ideology that goes against neoconservatives. Libertarians aren't exactly their best friends. And, you know, I would argue that neocons are probably the dominant philosophy in America. It's a liberal turned conservative hegemony. Uh, of American politics. We're forcing our politics on everyone. <sighs> they, they believe, this is a list from Stephen Hopper and Jonathan Clark, libertarians, in their book, 2004 book on neoconservative America alone, the neoconservative in the global order. This has everything to do with the new world order. Um, I probably should have touched on this a long, long time ago. I figured it goes without saying but when I was truly thinking about it today and I brought it up on the on the conversation on the phone, I realized, no, this has to be, you have to truly understand. Because most people don't understand the left and the right paradigm and how the people who traversed it all, the people who connected all who are on top, it's really a bunch of neocons and eugenicists and and Freemasons and and, and Jews. It's whites and Jews on top. And that's why Islam is the number one enemy. I'm almost out of time. See, basically they have a belief in religious conviction. And, um, you have to be good or evil and you have to fight evil. They have um, a f assertion of the fundamental determinant of the relationship between states rests on military power and the wilderness to use it. A primary focus on the Middle East and global Islam as a principal theater for American overseas interests. Um, they analyze political issues in black and white. Focus on the unipolar power of the United States, disdain, conventional diplomatic agencies, the State Department, etc. Look at the Reagan administration as an exemplar of all these virtues and seek to establish their version of Reagan's legacy as a Republican and a national orthodox. It's also important that neocons are blamed for 9-11 and Bush is blamed, you know, neocons rightfully so are blamed for the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan. Thank you.